Hello everyone, Melissa here for Debello's Designs and today I'm going to be doing a Let's Talk Crafty With Me series on gel presses. Um, to start off we're going to be using the Lavinia Stamps Squarely Gel Press Printing Plate. I'm going to be working with my gel press on a die cut plate that I have in my stash. We're going to be, I'm going to show you the difference between elements inks and distress oxide inks. So we have elements in olive, elements in lime punch, elements in russet orange, elements in sundance. And then we have the distress oxide in bundle sage, scattered straw, and ripe persimmon. I'm going to show you first of all the basics today of how to make a background for making Lavinia cards. Also we're going to be using the brushos to give that nice splattered effect. So we have brusho in leaf green, scarlet, and lemon. Now I've mixed these with water and put them in my little pots. Um, I label my pots just 1 through 12 because they come in a set and I also label my brushos powder so they match so I can easily figure out what color they are. I also have a fan brush, a little pot of water, and some paper. I am using the multifarious paper that I have cut down um, into squares. The squarely gel press is a four and a half by four and a half square, so I've cut down paper to match that. Oh, I also need a speed ball. This is a soft speed ball brayer. Oh, let's get started. I'm going to start with the Sundance as the background color. So you just simply place your speedball roller. This pad has gotten a little dry. So I want to show that this is how much ink I have on here. Barely any. And then you just roll it onto your gel plate. Get a good even coat. I don't know if you can see this, but Barely. I mean, you can barely see that there's any color on there. That's enough. And then, about these little pots. Fan brush, nice and wet. Start with the lightest color first. Just dunk it in. Tap off those big splotches there. In a minute I'll show you what the difference is. And just slightly tap it. All over. Rinse the brush. Go for some red. Now, brushos, when you do this, will go everywhere. They make a mess. If you don't like to have ink on your fingers, I recommend wearing some rubber gloves. Although it does wash off because it is water soluble, sometimes they do tend to stain this a little bit. Okay, now we're going to add a little green. And you can see 
see that. I don't have my autofocus on, so it's taking a minute. But there's just lots of little bitty spires. See? Now, if your hands are dirty, like mine are, be careful so I don't get on your card. Simply just put that down, press down, try to get it lined up as square as you can. I often tend to like to do this upside down so you can see what's going on on your card and you can just smash it down. So this is a drier ink with the brushes. And you get this nice pattern. It's awful speckly. The reason for that is because it's a pretty strong mix in this red. I don't have it diluted as much as I normally do. I'll set that off to the side, let it dry, make another one. I'm going to do this one this time. Okay, moving on. This time we're going to use Lime Punch for the background. Okay, so it's pretty well covered. It's probably too much. That's okay. I'll just put it on. Good and an even coat. Clean the brayer off just on this paper here. And we're going to add some yellow. This time I'm going to do a lot more brush -o, bigger water, bigger droplets of the brush ink so you can see what the difference is. I want to splatter that off just a bit. Now, I don't know how people can make this go in an area because mine goes everywhere. I'm going to put a lot of drops on today on this one. So now you can see all this wonderful swirls. That's because it's really wet. And when you're working with this acrylic cutting block, you can push it down, you can move it around, you can see where it's going. It's not such a surprise. Look at that. It's gorgeous. I like this effect a lot more with the bigger more organic look. It's easier to blend in with your other colors when you're using this for a background. And I'm going to make some fall cards out of this. I'll set that to the side. Okay. This time I'm going to move on to the oxides. The scattered straw is the next color. a good wipe off so the colors don't mix. Okay. Now oxides are a lot different. You can see it on the roller. It doesn't take much. Like that's enough. And then you put it on nice and even coat. I'm 
Now I'm pushing on this pretty hard to get that to come off. And this is just cheap copy paper. Okay. I think we'll do maybe just orange and red this time. I need some samples. Oh, this one that I made the other day. Oh, it's so dark in here. I hope I can see it. Okay. Some yellow. Just a little bit of yellow. This is already yellow on the background, just adding a little bit more to pick up some brightness because the brushes are a little bright. Cool. Dots everywhere. Just a little bit of green. Now the reason I'm doing this all the same color and they're all kind of being fall colors just to stick with our fall theme for the moment. These are colors that I don't generally use because I really like pinks, purples, blues. In my work you can probably tell that. Okay, so do it again. Take her down as straight as you possibly can. Give it a good rub. Flip it over. Oh yeah. So honestly, the difference between Distress Oxides and the Elements inks in colors that are pretty close to the same, there's not a whole lot of difference. You do get a lot of that creamy look. So this one is with the oxide. This is with the elements. Just gives it that softer finish instead of the bright finish, depending on the look you're going for. Okay, I'm going to show you one more and I'm going to do this with too much ink. And I'm going to show you what happens. Okay, so I'm putting a lot, this is a lot of ink on here. This is like full, oh, it's in russet orange, maybe you'll be able to see it better. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it not blended really well, just on there. Still, see, so much ink, look at that. That's how much is left over. I'm gonna pull this up. This red that's diluted, but it's not. There's probably more of the brush out powder in it than is needed. Now, there's no mixing ratio on brush out powders. Like, you just put a little bit in. I take my lids off. A lot of people have said, don't take the lids off, just poke a hole. Well, to get them to go in the pots, it's kind of difficult. So, I simply open the lid. I have a little stick and I put in that much. No, this is hard to see. I put in approximately that, you know, a good little scoop. Not even, that's too much. That much. And then I fill that little pot up with water and stir it around until it's really good and dissolved. Now, that is how you determine <laughs> how much powder there's no there you don't know it's kind of when you just play with it if you feel like it's too strong you can always just add more water to it i do that often i let my pot get down halfway <coughs> excuse me let my pot get down halfway and then fill it up with water again 
Sometimes I let them sit for too long. Pots dry out. I don't even wash them. I just add more water. Away you go. Okay, now this one I'm is not cut right. Well, see how that looks. It's still pretty. Now I blended that a little bit too much, so it's not giving me the effect that I wanted to be able to show you. So let me do it again. Because this pad is so wet and juicy, it, the russet orange, it's just, it's crazy. Okay, so we're just going to put it on and not blend it. Too much ink. I'm going to add a spritz of water. Um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to pull it with no brush out. Just so you see what just one color, solid color of ink looks like. So now that still looks pretty good, but a lot of times you get these really grainy pieces. Anyways, that's a result of not blending it properly. Now, I don't really think you can mess up gel press plates. You can do however you want. Like, there's no rules to this. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I had some camera malfunctions. So, I just wanted to show you one more time the backgrounds that we just created. And so, this one is with the Sundance ink in the background. This one is with the Lime Punch ink in the background with the brush of powders. This one is with the Scattered Straw Distress Oxides. Russet orange with the brushos. It's beautiful. Love this one. And this one, russet orange with only ink, with quite a bit of ink. Um, hopefully, you can really see here. See how grainy it kind of looks? Still gives a nice effect. Still is a usable for a background when you add your stamps and all your other inks. It'll be fine, but that's why you get that grainy look. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Um, I'm going to make a series of gel press printing tutorials. Um, so, hope you join me for that. And thank you for viewing the Let's Talk Crafty to Me series. Thanks.